Hi, I'm Prabash and you are watching Engineers Fight. So in this video, we'll solve some multiple choice questions from the chapter Strength of Materials. I have taken these questions asked in past PSU exams and these questions can also be helpful for future PSU exams and PSC exams like OPSC, APPSC, Telangana PSC, Maharashtra PSC and any other public service commission examinations in various states. So the thing is simple, the question will come. You have to pause the video, try the question yourself, then we will discuss the answer. So let's start. So in this question, he has given a rod of cross-sectional area 10 mm to 10 mm. Okay. Then carrying an axial tensile load. So he has given this rod is carrying an axial tensile load of 10 kN. So the tensile stress developed. What is stress? Stress is a resisting force by cross-sectional area. What do you mean by resisting force means whatever the force this body is resisting due to an applied load of 10 kN. So we know that stress sigma equal to stress sigma equal to P by A. So P is given as 10 kN and area is given as 10 mm to 10 mm. But you can see in the options the unit is given in MPA. So just remember that 1 Newton per mm square equal to 1 MPA. So this is the uh, only trick for this question else the question is very easy. So I can write it as 10 into 1000 Newton divided by 10 into 10 mm square. So just I have cancelled. So that is 100. Newton per mm square or I can write it as 100 MPA. So very easy question. Please note it down and try the next question. So in this question he has asked deformation per unit length in the direction of a force is what? For example, I have taken a body and initially the length of this body is L0. Then I have applied a tensile force P. So initially the length was L0. After the application of tensile load P, it will try to elongate this body. So after the application of the tensile load, the body has deformed and the final length of this body after the application of tensile load P is LF. So what do you mean by strain or normal strain that is change in length per unit length. So strain epsilon is given as change in length per unit length means whatever the change has occurred divided by the original length. So after the application of the load the change is this final length minus initial length L of minus L0 divided by the original length. Original length is L0. So this strain is known as normal strain or linear strain. So this is also known as linear strain or actual strain or normal strain. So the option is C. I hope you have understood this and try the next question. So the next question, the equal and opposite forces applied to a body to tend to elongate it. I have just discussed, suppose this is a body I have taken and I have applied equal and opposite force in both direction. So after the application of this load, the body will try to elongate. The body will try to elongate means the whatever the stress is produced that that is known as tensile stress. So the option tensile stress is B. 
the compressive stress what do you mean by compressive stress suppose same equal and opposite forces if i apply to compress this body means after the application of this load the body will compressed and this is known as compressive stress that is option d but he has asked about elongate it so the correct option is b tensile stress try the next question So before solving this question, let us understand the stress strain curve for a mild steel metal. So this is the stress strain curve for a mild steel metal and from point O to A, this is completely straight that is linear and this point A, this point A is known as limit of proportionality. So below this limit of proportionality, there is no deformation occurred in this body. Means if I remove the stress, the body will return to its original shape. So be up to point A, Hooke's law is valid. And what is Hooke's law? Hooke's law states that the stress is directly proportional to strain. And stress equal to Young's modulus into strain. So up to this proportionality, limit or limit of proportionality the Hooke's law is valid so if I remove the load the body will return to its original dimension there is no deformation occurred up to the limit of proportionality and Hooke's law holds good up to limit of proportionality so the option is B so please note it down and try the next question So we have just discussed that is stress is directly proportional to strain up to limit of proportionality or proportional limit. But in the option, the limit of proportionality is not given. So if you just tick none of the above, that will be a wrong answer. How? Let me tell you. So this is the stress strain curve. A is known as limit of proportionality and this point B is known as point B is known as elastic limit. So up to elastic limit, if I remove the load, the body will come to its original position. And this point A, that is limit of proportionality and point B, elastic limit are very close to each other. But from point A to B, it is not linear. But the point A and point B are very close to each other. So the stress can be proportional to strain up to elastic limit also but if in the question limit of proportionality would be given that would be the correct answer but he has not given the limit of proportionality he has mentioned elastic limit so the answer is elastic limit that is option a so try the next question So beyond elastic limit, if I continue my loading, the yield point will come and for a mild steel material, there are two yield points. So point C dash is known as upper yield point and this point C is known as lower yield point and the C dash and C these two points are also very close to each other but to understand the things we have to represent it in a graph in a such a way that we can derive the things so at the point c dash the yielding hatch just started means yielding has started but at the point C, the actual yielding of the material will be start. So at the point C, the actual yielding started. 
so let us come to the question the stress necessary to initiate yielding means the yielding will just start at point c dash so the stress required for this yielding let me write it as sigma y1 and at point c the actual yielding of the material will be start means the yielding will be continued and corresponding to this point c let me write as sigma y2 so you can see that the upper yield point is higher than the lower yield point and the stress required for this upper yield point sigma y1 is considerably, considerably higher than the stress required for lower yield point that is sigma y2 so the stress necessary to initiate yielding is considerably greater than necessary to continue it so the option is a i hope you have understand so try the next question so if a material is loaded beyond yield point stress means c is the point where actual yielding of the material started and corresponding to point c there is yield stress of sigma y2 if i further continue apply my loading beyond this yield point without the increase in stress the strain is continuous means you can see that cd is a straight line there is no increase in stress if i further continue to apply my loading beyond yield point c without increase in stress the strain is continuous means cd is the region of the starting of plastic region after the body has come to its plastic region if i remove the loading the body will not come to its original shape so if a material is loaded beyond yield point stress it loses its tendency to return to its original shape so so the correct option is d correct option is d next so de so after point d if i further continue my loading the body start to increase its strength so body start to increase its strength and e is the point is known as ultimate point e is the point known as ultimate point and stress corresponding to this ultimate point is known as ultimate stress means the maximum stress of the material corresponding to the ultimate point e means the maximum strength of the material is at point e that is known as ultimate stress and beyond point e if i further continue to apply the loading f will come and f is the fracture point fracture point so for this question the answer is d and try the next question while explaining the stress strain curve for a mild steel material we have derived that up to proportional limit hooke's law is valid means up to proportional limit hooke's law is valid and that is stress is directly proportional to strain and stress equal to young's modulus into strain so what is the young's modulus young's modulus is stress by strain that is longitudinal stress divided by longitudinal strain so young's modulus is the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain so the option is c so if stress is proportional to strain means shear stress will also be proportional to shear strain so stress is proportional to strain implies that shear stress will also be proportional to shear strain so shear stress tau is proportional to shear strain phi and tau equal to g into phi and the modulus of rigidity g equal to tau divided by phi so 
modulus of rigidity is defined as the ratio of shear stress to shear strength that is option C. Young's modulus is a material property and material property do not change with loading. So if the radius of a wire stressed by a load is doubled, Young's modulus will be remains unchanged, remains unaffected that is option C because material property do not change with loading. So we have solved 10 number of questions. I hope you have understood this 10 number of questions. We will continue this series of solving the objectives from SOM in upcoming days. So stay connected, subscribe to this channel, we will meet in the next video. Thank you for watching.